guys, what's up? I'm Brett and welcome back to Math Hacks. Today we are talking about right triangle trigonometry. Now I know that sounds really difficult, but in all actuality, trigonometry simply stands for the study of triangles. And today we are studying right triangles. You'll be learning three new topics today. The first and most important is our trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent. We'll be using the mnemonic device SOKATOA to help us remember their relationships. We'll also be talking about the Pythagorean theorem, and we'll use the fact that in Euclidean geometry, there is always 180 degrees in a triangle. Let's get started. So today we are learning about right triangle trigonometry. And essentially, what we're going to be doing is solving right triangles. Now, what do I mean by solving a right triangle? That just means that I am going to find any missing side lengths or angle measures in our right triangles that are given. So we have this triangle and we know that it has one leg that is a measure of 4.5 and it has an angle that has a measure of 23 degrees. We don't know what this leg nor what the hypotenuse is, and we also need to find the remaining angle. Now before we get started, the first thing you may be wondering is how do I know this is a right triangle? I know it's a right triangle because it has this square mark in this angle. So that means that that's a 90 degree angle. It also means that this side directly across from the 90 degree angle is what we call the hypotenuse. And that's going to be really important for our problems today. So let's go ahead and begin by solving for side B. And you could start this in any order you want. You don't have to start with side B. That's just where I'm going to start. To solve for leg B, we are going to have to use our trig functions. So let's review what these three trig functions mean in relation to the triangle. So these are the definitions for sine, cosine, and tangent as related to the triangle. This says that the sine of angle x is equal to the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse. We already know that the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. Now the opposite side just depends on where you're standing in the triangle. So in this triangle here, we know that this has an angle measure of 23 degrees. So it would be most helpful to work from this angle. Now when we're standing at this angle, the opposite side is the one that's all the way across. So that would be leg B in this case. So this leg would be the opposite to angle 23. And like I mentioned before, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. So sine equals the opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle x equals the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So again, let's say that we're working from the 23 degree angle. In this case, the adjacent leg is the one that is next to the angle that's not the hypotenuse. In this case, that would be the leg that has a measure of 4.5 units in this case. So Cosine would be the adjacent 4.5 over the hypotenuse C. And lastly, we have the tangent function. The tangent function says that tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So if I'm working from the 23 degree angle, the opposite side is the one across, so that would be B, and the adjacent is the one next to it, which would be 4.5. Now the handy way to remember these relationships is the mnemonic device SOKATOA. So I've kind of color coded it here for you. You can see that SO stands for sine, S for sine, 
is the opposite over hypotenuse. So O for opposite and H for hypotenuse. Ka, C stands for cosine, A for the adjacent leg, and H for the hypotenuse. And then lastly, Toa stands for tangent, opposite, and adjacent. So, so ka toa is the easiest way to remember these trig relationships. Okay, let's go ahead and solve this first problem. So, say we're working from angle 23 degrees, and we want to solve for the leg B. What I need to do is determine which of these three trig functions would work best for solving for B. Now, I want to choose the function that also uses the other piece of information I have, which is the 4.5. So I want to use the opposite and the adjacent leg to 23 degrees. So opposite and adjacent, I'm going to want TOA, which is tangent of x equals the opposite over adjacent. So I'm just going to write out the equation and fill in the information that I know for this triangle. Now all I have to do is solve this equation for B. So I see that I have tangent of 23 degrees equals B over 4.5. So to undo the divide by 4.5 here, I'm going to multiply both sides by 4.5. In doing so, these will cancel out and I'll be left with simply B on the right hand side. Now to calculate this, you need a calculator because evaluating the tangent of 23 degrees is pretty much impossible to do in your head. So I know a lot of you will be using your phone to calculate this, so let's go ahead and walk through how you're going to do that. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your rotate is off. So I'm just going to make sure that my auto rotate lock is turned off. And now when I rotate the phone, I get, a scientific calculator. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So the first thing you want to check before you start punching this into your calculator is you want to make sure that you're in degree mode and not radian mode. Now, the way you can tell is by this button in the bottom left corner. If it says rad, that means that you're not in radian mode. See what happens when I click that button? Then rad for radian shows up here in the screen panel. So I want to make sure I'm going to click it. Now it says degree. I'm going to go ahead and turn off radians. And it doesn't say anything up there. So if nothing's up there, then it assumes you're in degree mode. Now, unlike your normal scientific calculator, entering things on your phone calculator is a little bit backwards. Instead of entering tangent and then hitting 23, we are going to hit 23 and then hit the tangent key. That'll give me this long decimal approximation, and I'm simply going to go ahead and multiply that by 4.5 to get my answer. There we go. We can go ahead and round that to 1.91. All right, next let's solve for the hypotenuse. So I want to choose a trig function that has a hypotenuse in it. So that means I'll be using either sine or cosine since both of them have hypotenuse. Now, technically I know both of these legs so I could use either sine or cosine. I would recommend using the 4.5, so the adjacent leg, just in case you made a mistake here, that way you don't mess up your answer to this part of the problem. So I'm going to stick with the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse to solve for C. So adjacent hypotenuse puts me at ka, which is cosine. So I have the cosine of 23 degrees is equal to the adjacent leg, which is 4.5, over the hypotenuse, which is C. Now this one is a slightly more difficult problem to solve for C because we have C in the denominator. So I think one of the easy ways you could go about solving this problem is by making this a fraction over one, and then we can cross multiply. By doing that, I'll get rid of all the fractions in one step. After cross multiplying, I get C times the cosine of 23 degrees 
is equal to 4.5 times 1. Now to isolate C, I just need to divide both sides by cosine of 23 degrees. Let's go ahead and enter this on our calculator. So I already know that 4.5 times 1 is just 4.5. So let's go ahead and figure out what the cosine of 23 degrees is, and then we can go ahead and divide 4.5 by that value. So I'll start with 23, make sure I'm in degree mode, and then hit the cosine button. And that gives me 0 0.9205. So I'm just going to keep a few of those digits right now. And then we can go ahead and do this division. And I'll go ahead and round our answer to two decimal places to give us 4.89. So our hypotenuse is 4.89. Another way you could have solved for the hypotenuse was by using the Pythagorean theorem. And we could use it in this step because we knew two of the three sides. And anytime you know two of the three sides of a tri right triangle, you are free to use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm just going to show you how you would do that real quick so you get a good idea at the alternate way of solving this. So I just went ahead and filled in the Pythagorean theorem with the parts I know. So I knew that the two legs were 4.5 and 1.91. So I went ahead and plugged them in for A and B. And then we're trying to find the hypotenuse, which is C. All I need to do here is square both these values, sum them, and then I can take the square root of both sides to solve for C. And as you can tell, our answers came out the same, which is good. This was just the alternate way of solving it. So we have all of the side lengths figured out. We know that this measure is 23 degrees, and we also know that this is a 90 degree angle, which means that we only have one thing left to solve for, and that is the measure of angle A. To do this, we are going to use our third key concept, which is that there are 180 degrees in a triangle. So that means that all three of these angles need to add to 180. I can go ahead and make a handy little equation out of this. I could say that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C must equal 180. Now we can go ahead and plug in the measures that we know. So we are looking for the measure of angle A. We know that the measure of angle B is 23 degrees. And we know the measure of angle C is 90 degrees. When I add 23 and 90, I get 113. And then I'll just subtract 113 from both sides. And I get that the measure of angle A equals 67 degrees. So that's the last piece of information. And now we have solved the triangle. We know all three angles and all three side lengths. All right, I'm going to walk you through a second example of solving a right triangle, so that way you can see a couple more of these functions worked out. All right, so we are going to solve this triangle. That means that we're going to need to find the side lengths of A and B, as well as the measure of angle B. And we'll be using the 12 degree angle as our reference angle. So what I want to do now is decide which of my three trig functions. So which of the three trig functions I can use to solve for side length of A. So A is a cross from the 12 
degrees, so it is the opposite. I also know what the hypotenuse is, the leg that is directly across from the 90 degree angle, it is 10. So I want to use something that involves the opposite and the hypotenuse. Looking at my little mnemonic device here, I see that sine involves both the opposite leg and the hypotenuse. So I'm going to set it up that sine of 12 degrees is equal to A divided by 10. To solve for A, all I need to do is multiply both sides by 10. And I'll go ahead and plug this in my calculator to figure out what it's equal to. So I'll round that to 2.08. Now we know two sides of our right triangle, so we could choose to use another trig function to solve for b, or to use the Pythagorean theorem. If we want to use a trig function, I need to decide which one would work to solve for b. Now b in relationship to the angle we know, which is 12 degrees, is the adjacent leg. It is right next to it, and it's not the hypotenuse. So I would want to use the adjacent leg. That means I'll be using either cosine or tangent. And here I need to decide whether I want to use the opposite leg or the hypotenuse as my other piece of information. I always recommend using the information that they gave you just in case you made an error on the other leg. So I'm going to use the hypotenuse in this case. So I need to use 12 degrees in relation to the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse will leave me with the cosine function since it is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, all we have to do here is multiply both sides by 10 to get the answer for B. Okay, the last piece of information we need to solve this right triangle is simply angle B. Remember, all three of our angles need to sum to 180, so I'm going to go ahead and make an equation that relates all of these angles to 180. So the measure of the missing angle then must be 78 degrees. And we have solved for all three sides and all three angles of our triangle, so our triangle is complete.